I notice that there are a few people here this morning that were at Mass yesterday, so you get a bonus today, because I threw my homily out. I uh, was on my iPad this morning, checking out some news things, and, and then I happened to come across this little thing. It said something like this, 16, um, 16 people, 16 uh, questions about Catholic faith that everybody will get. And it was a, a BuzzFeed uh, blog on Catholic practices. And it was so negative. Everybody was complaining. And it, well, when I was a kid, my parents made me go to the 8 o'clock Mass. I said, I'll go, but to a later one, I want to sleep in. Another one complained about fasting. Another one complained about not eating meat on Friday. And it was, it was gripe, 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 gripe. And I was so angry. I wanted to get on that pad and write back. But I knew it would be a reaction, not a thoughtful reflection. But what it made me think of uh, was, was how much, and I don't know why, when I came into St. Bernard, I had a, like a paradigm shift in my relationship with Jesus Christ. Because for the first time in all my years of priesthood, it was with such clarity that if I said, who is Jesus to me? I would say, he's the great teacher, the great teacher. And for some reason, I don't know why, I, I have connected with Jesus Christ as a teacher extraordinaire, that, that he teaches about the life of the Spirit in a way that, that I don't find other places with, with the clarity and the focus that he does. Everything he touches, it, it is incredible. And so today is no exception. It makes me think of this. If you've ever seen one of those animal movies where uh, there's an antelope that's been killed or dies, and, and then all these wolves or hyenas or lions come to tear off the flesh and eat it. Okay, and they're all at it, rah, 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 and then snapping at each other because one sees a better mouthful here or wants the heart, rah, 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 and they, they're, but they're all going at it. And then Simba comes along. Simba walks out, and they all back off. Now they know who Simba is, whatever part of the animal kingdom, the, the ruler, the king. This has authority, this animal, and they all know it. Is it stronger? I don't know, but there's something about it. Simba. Now, Simba comes and eats, and then they can have their fill afterward. If Simba came out and said this, I'm the best of the best of the best of the best, get over it. We'd say, oh, my God, calm down, Simba. But if everybody else said it, Simba's the best. Ah, that's different. When I was a young priest, I just ordained in San Marino, and I don't know why they did this to me, but they sent me out to uh, evaluate the uh, Catholic school with the WASC. <laughs> I didn't know much about this stuff, so I went as the priest representative. And it was to, I was sent to Mary Knoll School down on Hewitt Street in uh, central Los Angeles in the uh, industrial section. And... Um, Marinol School, the Marinol sisters taught there, it was, they were tough and strict. All Japanese school. And uh, I knew very little about Japanese culture. I'd read a couple novels, I think. And, and uh, I, I had, and, and any, by the way, anyone Asian here, so forgive me as I make this kind of generalized statement. My understanding of Asian people is that they, they really do approach humility. They don't go brag. They don't like to stand out and, and draw attention to themselves. They're very indirect and respectful, and, and they got such class when it comes to that kind of thing. They don't say, I'm the best of the best of the best. So I go out there, and, and at one point in my three days of evaluating, I was supposed to evaluate even the, the way that they play on the playground and the way they interact and all. And the boys were playing basketball, and there was one boy about two or three inches taller than everybody else. He was clearly the best basketball player. And he gets out there, phew. So I said to him, just off the cuff, I said, boy, you're really good. Here's what he said to me. No, I'm just like the others. And I thought, how strange that response. So I said, no, you made every shot. You're really quite good. He said, no, we're all the same. And I realized afterward, at least I think, that was very Japanese. I, I don't stand out over the rest and announce it. If you recognize it, fine, but I don't have to announce it. 
There's something very much like what I think Jesus is getting at here today in the Scripture. Now, the luckiest person here, as I see it, is Lauren. Now, maybe some other parents have already done it, but Lauren is here being baptized. She's not a Catholic Christian right now, but she will be at the end of the ceremony. And her parents and godparents, I hope they'll take to heart what I'm saying here today. You've got to teach her. This lesson of Jesus is today as well as many others. Because Jesus has a gem here today to give to Lauren and to all of us. And if we get it, if we learn it, it's incredible. Like those 16 people that complained about all the stuff in the church, I said, Yo, please, the stuff you're talking about is the easy stuff. What Jesus wants is what he's preaching today, and this is spiritual stuff. Let me take one. We're supposed to fast for an hour, not before Mass, but before we receive communion. So that will be about 10 a.m. this morning, Mass starting at 9.30. That means that you could have eaten all the way up until 8 a.m., I mean 9 a.m., uh, because that would be an hour before communion, okay? So you could have eaten like a little piggy today, stuffed your face, and come just like, oh, God, I can't get another thing in. But I stopped before 10. I stopped before 10. So, uh, I mean, b before, uh, what, what time is it? Yeah, uh, stop before 9, so now I can go to communion. Really? Is that what fasting is about? Fasting is a spiritual reality. The point of fasting isn't just so you fulfill a, a rule. It is to purify yourself and to open yourself to be hungry, to be hungry for the Eucharist. Now, when I was a little boy and received my first communion, it was three hours. That was a little more of a challenge. But how many here remember when it was midnight? Anybody here? Before midnight, you could eat all you want, but at midnight it stopped. And you couldn't eat or drink even water? Could you have water? Nothing. Nothing. Till you received communion. How did you go to the 11 o'clock mass? Oh, God, I can't wait till this is over. And then on the way, I had to pass that bakery and smell those rolls. Oh, I wanted to kill. So... The, the, the point wasn't just a, an exercise in not eating and then getting upset about it. It was to purify. It was to actually experience, if you could, physical hunger and then jump to the spiritual and say, just like I am physically hungry, more importantly, I want to spiritually hunger for the Lord, for the truth. So if I came to this Mass hungry for the Lord's teaching and say, whoa, it's teaching about humility, what does he have to say about this? So, I remember the BBM sisters teaching me about humility. And they said, you know, there is false humility. In fact, that boy that I said, you're really good, and he said, no, I'm just like the others. Lie! Liar! You're much better. Come on, own it. No, I'm just the same. That's a lie. That's not humility. That's saying something that's not true. Now, what would not be humility also would be this if I said, you know, you're really good. I know I am. I'm really the best one here. In fact, I think I'm the best in the last five years. Do you know how many trophies I have? Have you seen that commercial for national car rental? He comes down and he says, I'm looking really good. He says, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not waiting anymore I, uh, at the counter, so I'm losing weight or whatever. And then... Uh, he goes out to his car, and as he's just about to get in, this guy comes by on this little... Have you seen this? It's a wonderful commercial. I love it. He's coming by on this exercise thing, and he says, Hey, James, how are you doing? You're looking good. And he says, I know I am. Now, that's not humility. I'm the best of the best of the best. I know it. I know it. So humility is not that. That's arrogance. And it's not saying, Oh, I'm no good. Humility is saying the truth with humility. It's recognizing I don't own the gift. It was given to me. Last night, I went to the L.A. Chamber Orchestra concert in Glendale. Oh. I heard this pianist. I'd never heard him before. I think his name was Jeffrey Denk. I'm not sure. It, other than his oddness, his, the way he walked out to the stage, he did these weird things. It doesn't matter. He was lost in his music, but it was, he was hard to watch, but whoa, to listen. 
And I, and I play the piano and organ. I'm not great, but I, I, know, I know something about the instrument, and I know I can't make the music that I hear in my head, but he could. And what I love, I sit on the keyboard side. Thank God it wasn't the keyboard and I could see him because he was distracting, but his music was not. It was exhilarating. And I'd watch him approach with his hand to play one note, and, he's, and it, it was softening as he went, bum, bum, bum. And, and just to watch his hand go, bum, and like a bell it sounded. And I said, sweet Jesus, that is so good. My friend said, go up and speak to him. I don't want to go up and speak to him. I don't want to go say something to him. But if I did, I would have said, oh, my God, some of those notes you touched, they were like little bells to me. And if he had said this, I know, I'm really good. I've perfected it, haven't I? I would have went, really? But if he had said, thank you so much, I've really worked at it. You know, these artists, they are great. They still practice 8 to 10 hours a day. And you know why? They'll practice a trill. I don't know if you know what a trill is. It's going back and forth between two notes going, dee, 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 and they go really fast. Dee, 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 dee. They'll practice that for 15 minutes. No, it's not right yet. And not just the trill, but how they leave the trill. Oh, it's pure art. But if this man said, you know, yes, God gave me a gift. I work hard to develop it. But it's a gift. I, I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. That's humility. Now, why would Jesus focus on that? Because if we live a lie, I'm the, be the best of the best of the best, even though we might be, we're certainly not the best when we have to tell everybody that we are. But if we recognize that we've been given gifts, and then we have a responsibility, if we appreciate the gift, to go it and to develop it. But in the end, even though we might say, I do know this as a fact, I am the best on the planet with this, but it's all a gift. So one can be the best and acknowledge that they are the best and still be humble about it. Now that is not easy to achieve. That's a spiritual journey. And not everybody knows how to make it. How will you teach it to Lauren? How will you do it? It ain't easy. But I do know this. And I know that Jesus is an extraordinary teacher. He goes to the core. And he's able to find a gift and tell us, this is what you want. This is what you need. And if you find this, if you find this, you will find life. You will find life. Today, he invites us to consider the gift of humility and what that might do to our lives.